Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video on this channel. Today we have a look into building our own redirect module, which you might remember for Nux 2. Pretty easy, so let's get going. Redirects are super important on the web. I mean, who likes broken links? And honestly, for SEO, it's also a deal breaker if you don't have any redirects, if you change URLs from your pages, for example, or if you migrate a whole page over, maybe from an old WordPress setup to Nux.js and so on and so on. So you can't really live without redirects, especially if you care about these parts. If you build like an SPA, you still might want to have these nice redirects for your users because maybe they bookmark the link in your application. If it's broken, they're like, damn, where to find it now? So redirects are a necessity. And back in times of Nux2, there was a very nice redirect module that you could use back in times that uh, I was maintaining, but with Nux3, that's not necessary anymore. So today we have a look into how to rebuild the functionalities of this redirect module with what Nux3 and Nitro are providing to you, and then have a look if we need more than that, so more customization. Let's get into it and take a look at our demo application and the redirect module. Our demo application is pretty minimal as usual. We have our general stuff here, the Nux4 compatibility. You don't necessarily need that. We only have that app folder here. Also, if you haven't ever seen that, link to the video where I explain what this is doing in the description and the usual places. And here only to have some dark mode, like very, very basic. And with this setup, we want to do a few things, but let's have a look first how this looks like in the browser, because we want to see what's happening here. And before, let's have a look at the app.view, which is basically just showing the route path. And that's mainly it, because we need all of that to just show what redirects are capable of. And now if we go here, we see, okay, we have the route straight away, right? Just slash. If we go to, I don't know, slash ABCDE, then we see ABCDE, pretty straightforward. And now we want to implement some of the nice redirects. And for this, we have a look into the redirect module first. So as I mentioned, the module I maintained for quite a while, started six years ago, and the docs already say it here, okay, in Nux3 redirects, the support of the box for route rules, this module may not be needed. And first of all, this is absolutely correct. So we have a look into one more route rule. I've shown quite some route rules in an earlier video, which is also linked about like uh, caching, uh, the different rendering modes and so on, so on. So definitely worth watching that if you don't know much about the route rules and want to learn more. But first of all, let's have some very easy redirect scenarios and get started on how to implement in our tiny Nux3 slash 4 compatibility uh, application. So the first thing we want to do is a very simple redirect and we basically want to say, okay, slash old should go to slash new, right? This is pretty simple to get started with and that's all we need. And it was already kind of described in the readme. We need the route rules for that. So we just write route rules in here and then we can use a route rule called redirect. But first we have to specify the path. So we can say slash old, right? And then we say, okay, which route rules should apply? Uh, as you've seen before, maybe, yeah, the name is dis disabling SSR if you want to, and so on, so on. But we want to use the redirect route rule here. And then we could say, okay, we redirect to slash new. And well, that looks pretty simple, right? Let's have a look in the browser and see how that works. If we now open the old URL, you will see, oh yeah, there's a redirect here and we open new and the route is new and top there is new. That's all perfect. The only thing you might wonder about is that status code over here, which says 307 temporary redirect. So you would probably expect a 301 or 302 or something like that, but there's actually a good reason behind that. Because first of all, especially if you're still experimenting with redirects, if you're trying some things out, you should not necessarily use a 301 straight away because the browser is caching that. So then you might get like false positives and things that shouldn't work like that necessarily. So you start with a very simple 307, then the browser can deal with that, it's fine. Well, because it's a temporary redirect, not to bother much. And at some point when you need that sweet SEO juice, then you switch it to 301, which will we do right now. Switching is not too complicated, we just replace that simple string here with two, and then we give in the new URL, and then we say status code here and just say 301. Or if you want to also have 302, but commonly we want to permanent redirect here. And if we save the whole thing, then this will look as expected. We will then get the correct redirect. So let me quickly show you in the browser. And here we go. The 301 is there. We see it pretty clearly moved permanently and we got to slash new. So that's exactly what we wanted. The next thing to cover is some wildcard redirect because often it's not just like one link, it's 
bunch of links. So let's say, okay, we want to have like old dash white card and we want to move it to new dash wild card and everything behind that like slash a slash b slash c should also move all over. So let's tackle that. And luckily in the same complexity as before, because the good part is we can just say, okay, let's add a new route rule. And then we say, let's say wildcard uh, redirect here, just to comment a bit on that, uh, slash old wildcard to slash new uh, wildcard. And then everything behind here, let's do A, B, C, just to make sure that it also works. And what we do is we copy what we had before, and of course we need another name. We said old wildcard. And now here we add an actual wildcard, so the double asterisk, and then we say, okay, we just want new wildcard and also the asterisk. Also here, once again, you can define a status code. You can also decide, okay, I'm gonna leave it at uh, the 307 for now, which we'll do just for testing, but don't forget and make sure that uh, you want to change the status code at some point if SEO is of importance to you. And now we want to try it out. We have dash old wildcard slash ASD AISJOD. And this should, of course, go to new wildcard and then the same thing behind. So let's give it a try. And we see 307 as we planned and the new wildcard part. So pretty straightforward. That works. And these two cases are mostly the most common scenarios, right? If you just want to switch out URLs, have a more declarative name, a shorter one, perfect. But what if we need some more complex behavior? Let's say matching regex, replacing things, and so on, so on. Because this is what we didn't cover so far. So how to process with that? And for this, this is a little bit trickier because everything in the Nuxt config, and the same applies to pure Nitro as well, has to be serializable. That means we can't really write any kind of functions and logic in there. And if we look back at the redirect module in the browser, then we will see, okay, back in times in Nuxt 2, this was actually mixed in the Nuxt config because we had some documentation here saying, oh yeah, okay, just write it function right in here. And it's not a good idea in Nuxt 3, this is totally prohibited. So we can't really do that. But the best part is we still have an option to do that. So what we do instead is we use the power of Nitro. So in Nuxt, we have that app folder with the Nuxt for folder structure or the server folder. And in here, this is where Nitro comes into play. So what we can do is we can define a middleware basically before any request hits the Nuxt instance. So Nitro will handle the request and perform possible redirects. And that's global. So we can just say middleware redirects.ts. And in here, we can define a Nitro event handler and do our redirects. So we can do technically everything we did here in the route rules, also here in the redirects. But to be honest, it's a bit easier if we use the route rules for the more simple cases, because that can also leverage platform benefits, because this code will always be ran, right? For static rules, maybe they can be added, for example, in Netlify or Vercel, also Cloudflare to their own setup. So they are statically baked in and will give better loading times. And also there can be other improvements, for example, being added to the view router, also have some redirects there. That's not possible if you use that middleware. So treat with caution, of course, and only use it for the more advanced cases. And one advanced case that I saw on a project of mine was like, okay, we have a URL that's, for example, slash players slash uh, ABC. And then we had uh, a percent 23 in here. That's an encoded dash. Uh, and then some numbers, right? So far, so good. And while merging projects, we said, okay, the new URL structure should be users, and then we want ABC dash, and then the numbers. So that's a bit trickier, and we can't do the replacement of the 23 through the dash easy uh, in the route rules. So we have uh, another solution for that. And there can be many, many more rules we can all go through in that redirects uh, middleware. So what I usually tend to do in these cases is, I want to define some rules here and we can say, okay, for each of these rules is basically just another function taking the event and then either sending a redirect and don't. So we will do like a for loop in here to say like, okay, for const rule of rules. So we go through each of them and then we say, okay, we take the response, uh, which is just awaiting uh, the rule that we get. We pass in the event right now, TypeScript is still complaining, but we get there in a second. And if we say, if there is response, it's perfect, let's just return it. So if there's a redirect being sent, we take it, otherwise go to the next one. Now we could probably also do things in parallel here, but the big problem of parallelization is you want some kind of priority, right? Because 
the order of the rules could influence things. And we want to keep that. So we have a very simple sequential approach and it shouldn't take too long anyway, uh, because most of the static rules are already covered in the route rules. They will go first anyway, and then our, our custom code. So let's define a rule for this example and then uh, get going and try it out. For this, I'd like to define a new function here. So let's say redirect old uh, player page, for example, and we want to pass in the event here. And the event is type of H3 event. Um, and interestingly, this is the same as the defined event handler gets here. So this event here is also type of H3 event, getting the event handler request, but it's fine. And what we want to do is we want to import the type over here, uh, H3 event, and we import it from, not from Nitro Pack, but H3, the underlying HTTP framework. So now we have that function, it takes the event and can do stuff. And we want to put it in here. If we only have one rule, then that's fine. Otherwise, this is the order, right? What we can do now is we can get the path. So let's say const path is event path, or let's just do some destructuring here like this. And now we can say, okay, perfect. We take that. And if the new path, so if this doesn't really start with players, so if not path that starts with players slash players, and then we can fully disregard it rule and just return things, right? So far, so good. Now, we know this path starts with players. Now we need to get the new path. We have to do a transformation. So what we can do is we can say const new path equals path.replace. We want to just replace every uh, percent 23 with a little regex. We do it globally. You can also just use replace all, but it's fine too, with a dash, right? So we have exactly that part. Also, it's always nice to document these over here with a bit more than I just do here, but that's an example, of course. So like describe what the rule is doing, why exactly it's there and so on and so on. So we have that. And now if we have the new path, then we say, okay, you know what? If the new path already matches um, the current path, then also do nothing because we don't want an infinite redirect loop saying, hey, redirect to the current path. So far, so good. And now the only thing we really need to do is we actually need to send a redirect. And we do that by saying return send redirect and this is auto imported, but this also comes from H3. So we could also say we import it over here from H3. And then we say, we take the event, we need that, the new path and the status code. So we could say 307, for example, or if we're really done, 301. And that's the whole logic. So now we could add more and more and more rules. And the whole idea is take the first rule, take a look, if the response comes through, so that redirect, then we want to await it and then we're good. We could even here say, yeah, you know what? We should return the response. Why wasn't that there? We should return the redirect. And whenever that's done, all good. Otherwise, just continue. And if nothing happens, not a problem, because then that middleware will just do nothing and we're all fine. And from there, there's even more to improve because now, okay, we don't have any big async operation. Maybe you want to call an API to get like all the redirects from your CMS, for example. You can easily do that because in that redirects middleware, you can do whatever you want. Of course, then you would also want to cache the results. First, the redirects, right, from your CMS or from your API, you want to cache these. And maybe also the redirects from, okay, I got a, a path and I have the matching redirect already, I don't have to find it again. So you can cache that in the file system, the memory, and so on and so on. But I've shown you already that in the caching video in terms of how to cache certain things with define cached function and so on and so on. So definitely, if you haven't seen that, give that a look. Very important and good knowledge to know. But Let's see if the whole thing that we build actually works. Before we try it out though, we really want to make sure that we also replace uh, slash players over here with uh, slash users, because otherwise that whole criterion wouldn't be fulfilled either. But that's a tiny thing to add. You know, the sky's the limit, you can configure it as you want. But now you really want to see if the thing works or not. So let's jump into the browser. And if we now try slash player slash abc person 23 one two three four let's give it a try and we see it's redirected to users the replacement took place and we're all good and that works pretty fast as well it didn't take much time so as long as you have good caching as well because you don't want to do an api request all the time there as i said for your cms api routes then it's also pretty fast and smooth and of course this only works if you deploy it in with a server right with or like with an edge worker or whatever if you statically generate things then these rules can't really take place because if you have static files that won't work so it's very important to keep in mind if you statically generate the, your whole page through um, nux generate 
these, like everything in server will only run at build time and not at runtime. So then the redirect rules, they don't really help. But the route rules in your Nux config, they can also be rendered out statically. So that could work well. With wildcard redirect, it might be a bit trickier though. With, with the static ones, that should work too. If platforms like Cloudflare, Vercel, Netlify, they all support also the wildcard ones, but in your own, let's say VPS or CDN, that really won't work. So double check with your platform if that also makes sense. If you, as I said, generate your page with SSR at build time, so static site generation. But as long as you deploy with Nux build, that's all fine. And that's all for now. Like we built our own little redirect module. Everything worked out. Uh, source code, of course, also in the description as usual. Now you let me know. Did you use the redirect module next to? Do you like the new replacement? And what crazy redirect rules did you build so far? Um, keep it in the comments. I'm really curious. Also, let me know what else you want to see and check out all the videos linked um, as well as the latest Deja View episode because as usual, it's pretty amazing. And until then, uh, see you in the next video or maybe in, a, in the later one because there are quite some things in the backlog. You know, more like three stuff and the night store stuff, view, JavaScript, TypeScript. But uh, yeah, until we see each other next time, stay cool and happy hacking.